Stan Gibalisco here from a colorful nebula in some unnamed galaxy in an unnamed universe in an unnamed set of universes in an unnamed thought kingdom. The point of this video though is not to show you nebulae that happen to be colorful with brilliant stars at the center but rather a practical application of polar coordinates which I described in a video just a bit ago. This is the navigator's polar coordinate system that I described in that video where you have the central point which is generally the location of the object of interest such as an antenna or you or a robot or a ship or an aircraft or whatever. The radius coordinates are generally called range and they extend outward in a linear fashion along the reference axis which points north and the angle known as the azimuth or compass direction proceeds clockwise from north 90 degrees is east there's the range 180 degrees 270 degrees that is the basic scheme for this system but there are a lot of applications of this system that involves slight variations on the uh, nature of the system but the essentials are the same and one of the most important of these in amateur radio practice particularly is a, the directional pattern of an antenna such as a Yagi antenna also known as a beam. This is a typical directional pattern for a three element or four element Yagi antenna pointed north which would be straight up here. I have not put labels on any of these coordinates but that's east of course 90 degrees 180 degrees is south 270 degrees is west and these range or radius coordinate circles are not linear in this particular variant of the system rather they are logarithmic and represent decibels down from the effective radiated power at the center of the main lobe of the antenna which happens again to be pointed north. This might be zero decibels down, five decibels, 10, 15, 20, and then on, from onward in there you don't worry much about it. But you can see that the main lobe comes to zero decibels down with respect to the reference effective radiated power which makes sense. I mean that's what you are referring to. That is the main lobe and this, there are other lobes, other radiation uh, patterns. This is what the radiation pattern would look like as viewed from far far above the antenna which is located right at the center of the diagram. Side lobes for a similar antenna might look like this. Again the antenna at the center, you're high above it. The main lobe here is the zero decibel reference point, five decibels down, 10, 15, 20. The side lobes, which are weaker radiation uh, lobes from such an antenna, and they always exist, in this case are five, 10, 15 decibels down from the effective radiated power level at the center of the main lobe and the side lobes point directly east and directly west. Again we are looking at the antenna as seen from high high above. Again this is a navigator's polar coordinate system. This is true geographic north Again, here is the basic system in all of its glorious detail. And again, we have a main lobe illustration and then a side lobe illustration for a typical Yagi antenna in amateur radio practice. So that's one application of polar coordinates that we radio hams use. My call sign, by the way, is W1GV whiskey one 
good vibrations, although you'll never hear me using phonetics on the air because I am a CW operator only. Well, occasionally PSK31. Stan Jibalisco signing off once again from that nebula in an unnamed galaxy, in an unnamed set of galaxies, in an unnamed universe, in an unnamed set of universes, in an unnamed thought kingdom, you name it for me. How about Jibaliskian? That'll work for me. I'd be honored. Until next time. 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long.